Hey everyone, my name is Milan. And I am Stefan Damenberg. I've been working with Milan for about a year and a half now. Together we've been making many different videos. When we first started, we released our videos under Two Guys in a Camera Films. But lately, we switched over to our new name, Swaggerberg Productions. Making movies within different genres really helped us to find out what does work and what doesn't work. But of course we have much more to learn, and that's why it's great that so many people subscribe to follow us while we go on a journey to learn more and more about movie making with each video. Which brings us to this announcement video. We just hit 500 subscribers. <laughs> So, who's gonna clean this up? You can ask your mom. MOM! <sighs> oh well. <laughs> so, in order to celebrate or just starting our fan base, we said, Can you play it? So, in order to celebrate or just starting our fan base, we decided to read the tutorial for a video we created a few weeks ago our decapitation video. So I'd like to thank you for all the support and all the subscriptions and we look forward to making more videos in the future. Now on to the tutorial. So a couple of you have been asking me to do a tutorial on the decapitation effect we had in our Monday Challenge decapitation video. Well not as much the decapitation which was shown in the silhouette but more the aftermath in which the chopped off head falls out of a baklava. It's a very simple effect you just have to know how to shoot it. Heads up! This is the effect we are creating. In a silhouette, the head gets chopped off with a butcher cleaver. In the next shot, I'm holding the head up. It then drops out of the mask and I triumphantly walk away. Here's the things you need. Your camera. Why do I even mention that? A baklava and a green screen? They are unnecessary, you can do without either. Someone who doesn't mind losing his head. And for software, I'm going to use Adobe After Effects and Photoshop again. To add some blood, we're also going to use some stock footage from Action Essentials and Detonation Films. Do you have everything? Then let's get started. For this video, I actually drew a storyboard. I was working with my parents and my brother and I wanted to properly convey what I was trying to achieve. Notice that the final product is very close to the storyboard I drew. Here's the shot we used. Shot 6, take 8. I seem to pull my brother up from under the frame and hold his head up. He then drops out of frame and all I have left is the mask in my hand. As you can see, he's also got a green screen wrapped around him. What was my actually doing? So the main trick to this effect is, I'm not the one holding him up, he's pushing his head up. They see this in a lot of movies, when you're pulling somebody's hair, he's moving, I'm just pretending to hold him. So when the time's right, he just falls out, and I hold on to the back lava. The green screen is just there to help you create out any easier. As you might realize, the most difficult part of this effect is removing the body of the person whose head you've got off. Remember that the person who's holding his head should try to move as little as possible with his body. Let's start with opening After Effects and cut our footage real quick. Okay, the first order of business is to quickly key out the green. It's not a perfect key, but it will clean up a lot for us. Okay, the keying is done. We're also going to do a lot of manual, tedious masking for this one however, and no one enjoys that. The most difficult part is creating a clean plate for my body. Luckily, I am not moving a lot, but that's the part where this effect will be the hardest to conceal. Now that we've got the floating head, it's time to create our clean plates. Let's skip to a frame where my body is in about the same position as it is during the part in which I'm holding up the head. There, that seems to do fine. Now I'm going to save this frame and open it in Photoshop. Before we go to Photoshop, we're also going to find a frame where the painting in the back is visible and export a frame for that as well. After Photoshop we go. Here we are in Photoshop. You can also do this in After Effects and any other program, but I like doing this in Photoshop better. Another option would be doing this with time freezes in After Effects. Done. 
Now let's export this and load them back into After Effects. Back in After Effects, we're now going to track some footage. Let's create a new null object and call this nipple track. Yeah, that's right. We are going to track my nipple. Is that making you uncomfortable? There we go, tracked. Now let's parent this to our null and see what we got. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's clean this up a little bit by perhaps a little color correction and a little masking. Let's create another null object and track that wonderful painting in the background. Okay, now that the painting is tracked, we're applying our painting null to it and see how it does. There, a little color correction and masking might work for this one as well. So far, we've removed my brother's body and got our clean plates in. It still feels like it's missing something, isn't it? A stump where his neck used to be, perhaps? To Photoshop! I found this picture of a decapitated mask on the interwebs. Why anybody would buy this and wear this is a mystery to me, but it works great for the effect we are trying to achieve. I'm going to remove the background and some of the neck parts and just create a sort of stump. Let's export this and load it back into After Effects. So back to After Effects again. Does anybody else feel like a ping pong ball? Let's first track part of the baklava so we can apply our image to a null object. The good thing about our not fully green green screen is that we have a point of contrast to track. Now that all the tracking is done, we are going to apply the data to our null parent the image to the null as well. And we have to rescale and refit the thing. As always, we have to color correct it. With the color correction out of the way, we can apply our stock footage. I used some blood splatters from Action Essentials and some blood effects from Detonation Films as well. Now apply our color correction and aspect ratio and we've got all the visuals done. Congratulations. Now don't forget how important sound is for an effect like this. The sound of a head hitting the floor is going to make or break this effect. We have a Zoom H4n and I just started throwing things on my floor to see what would work. What I ended up with was a mix of a piece of duct tape hitting the floor and some boxing gloves bouncing off the floor. With everything combined, we ended up with this. And there we go. We just cut off all the heads of our friends and relatives. And we're all probably going to jail for first degree murder. But until then, my name is Milan Swagers. And my name is Stefan Daneberg. If you have any questions regarding this tutorial or anything else, leave a comment below or send us a private message. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And thanks again for all the awesome support. Stay tuned! <laughs>